The case number three is a case of essential thrombocytemia. This is a 39-year-old lady with uh, elevated platelets uh, in a range of 475 uh, that were detected on a usual annual uh, physical exam. And uh, the patient was at the same time found to have hemoglobin of 12.7 and white cell of 9.9, .9, which are within the normal range. The bone marrow biopsy was then done, revealing proliferation of megakaryocytes with elevated number of enlarged mature megakaryocytes in the bone marrow without any evidence of a reticulin fibrosis. And the molecular testing that can be done not only on bone marrow but also on blood did not reveal BCR able fusion, excluding chronic myeloid leukemia. And there was no uh, JAK2 mutation either, the most common one in the visceral negative MPNs. This patient actually had a type one color reticulin mutation detected. And if you look at the diagnostic process for essential thrombocytemia, which is outlined here, we, we start with the, uh, the collection of the criteria that would be my major criteria. And, and that would include the bone marrow biopsy. Uh, the bone marrow biopsy in patients with high platelets serves the purpose of documenting the disease uh, looking at the size, shape, and colors of megakaryocytes, as we noted before, but also to make sure that we are not facing uh, another disease that many times presents similarly with high platelets, which is the early or pre-fibrotic myelofibrosis. And in that case, uh, there would also not be much of fibrosis, but there will be some other findings that would be perhaps uh, dependent a lot on the eye of hematopathologist, dissect between the two types of the disease in the bone marrow, looking basically at the megakaryocytes themselves. In each diseases, and in ET particularly, we would have about 60% of the patients with the JAK2 mutation, about 20-25 with color reticulum mutation, like this patient, and a, a smaller percent of patients with MPL mutations. This is to say that there are patients that have no molecular marker at all uh, in our testing. For ET, all four major criteria or the first three major criteria and one of the minor criteria needs to be uh, fulfilled. And when we come to dissect the case between the ET or differentiate between ET and prefibrotic myelofibrosis, the key is to see whether there are any of the minor criteria that would help us take away the, the significance of uh, differentiation from the bone marrow alone by looking at the blood cell count, LDH and splenomegaly. And if these abnormalities are present, then it will make it easier for us to diagnose patients with prefibrotic myelofibrosis.